Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to Wednesdays with Larawana. Every Wednesday right here on canawanabuy.com, we bring you the latest information on recreational and medical marijuana from all over the globe. Now, this is the big week, everybody. People are traveling all over to come to Colorado to celebrate 420. 420 is the international celebration of cannabis. Many of you will be traveling, so here's some information to help your travel to Colorado better and abide by the rules. Um, there's a wonderful site called thecannabis.co, and that's part of the uh, Denver Post organization. And uh, this is a new column called Ask the Cannabis, and uh, this is written by Susan Squibb, and she's of the Cannabis staff. And um, we're going to read you some of the questions and answers. This is coming from uh, someone called Vacationing from Vermont, and they say we're coming to Colorado to celebrate legal pot, and we've heard there are hotels that are friendly to our kind. Can you direct me to a couple of them? And uh, the answer is, hey, Vacationing from Vermont. For hotel options, please know that the Colorado Clean Indoor Air Act was recently amended to include marijuana smoke, so it's not legal to smoke indoors. That being said, various hotels currently turn a blind eye to indoor marijuana smoking by guests. The evidence of being in a smoker-tolerant hotel will be smelled and not seen as you walk through the lobby or down the hallways. To have peace of mind you are being and being appropriate during your visit, talk to the hotel when you book your room and tell them what you need. Ideally, you want a designated smoking room or a room with an outdoor balcony out of sight from public view. Not all hotels with balconies are smoker friendly, so it's important to clarify the hotel policy before booking your room. Whatever the tolerance for cannabis smoking at your hotel, be a good guest and resist the urge to hotbox your bathroom hourly or daily if you didn't get a smoking room. Ultimately, this smoking quandary shouldn't put a damper on your visit. You can have smoke-free fun with edibles and vaporizers. The next question says, um, Hey Cannabis, I went to buy recreational weed at Evergreen Apothecary. They wanted to record my name and personal info in their computer. I objected and was asked to leave by a very grumpy security dude. WTF. I thought it was legal for them to uh, predicate a cash sale on adding my name to a computer database. Uh, the answer to uh, this anonymous person was, you are correct, age verification from the government issued ID card is the only proof you need to make legal purchase of recreational cannabis. Amendment 64 actually forbids acquiring personal con consumer information. It sounds like the center was carrying over some of its data collection habits uh, necessary for medical marijuana purchases. I inquired on your behalf and the manager, Tim Cullen, explained Evergreen Apothecary's sales policy. And this is a quote, customer data, name and phone number is required if they wish to pay in a way other than cash. Otherwise, it is not. The data is used to contact them if they dispute a credit card charge, not to track sales. Cullen also said they do not pay the security guard to be grumpy. He's usually not sour. Knowing this, definitely take cash and give them another try or find another recreational store with customer service more to your liking. The next one says, uh, I've read about the taxes involved, the new recreational pot, 25%. Should I keep paying to renew my red card instead of to avoid the hefty fines? The answer to the, the red card, by the way, is uh, people that have medical cards in Colorado. Uh, the answer to that was the total tax per purchase depends on local tax rates. Fortunately, 15% of the total tax is an excise tax paid by the business on the wholesale level, so you won't see this tax on your retail receipt. What's on the retail receipt is the 2.9% sales tax that is applied to all goods, as well as 10% retail marijuana state sales tax, plus any local sales taxes and local excise taxes. Now, um, we, we just talked about the, uh, the hotel situation, so I do want to uh, read you a couple of more things. This is a cautionary tale. Don't leave your pot in your hotel room after checkout. 
and this is also from the cannabis, and they're really on top of what's happening in Colorado. This is the best source for information, so go to the cannabis.co. Um, this is by Richard Baca, and he's uh, the, the head dude over there. When Lewis checked into the Hyatt Place Denver Cherry Creek recently, he first went to the Modest Room's window, which overlooked Glendale's crowded stretch of South Colorado Boulevard. I wanted to see if I could open the window, he said, but no, it was completely sealed. Lewis, whose Twitter handle is uh, at L-O-U-I-D-I-D-D-Y, and he asked that his last name be withheld, <laughs> yet he's giving out his Twitter, uh, he wanted to open the window so that he could smoke the legal marijuana that he had purchased on his snowboarding vacation in Colorado. But since the window wouldn't open, he decided to ingest his cannabis elsewhere. I smoked it outside of the hotel, he said. I didn't want to chance it. When it was time to fly home to Texas the next day, Lewis set his leftover marijuana in a sealed container on the hotel's room, uh, hotel room's desk, and he ditched his bubbler in the bathroom trash. Texas is no Colorado when it comes to pot friendliness, he said, and he didn't want to risk breaking the law by flying home with the drugs and pipe. I figured I'd leave it behind on the desk in case the maid wanted it. You know, positivity, he said. Um, they gave you those cylindrical green jars, and I left about half an eighth and another little bag, maybe about a half a gram, and it was sealed. When Lewis checked his bank statement a few days later after he checked out, he saw an extra $200 charge from the hotel. A quick call back to Denver informed him that he was being charged for an in-room uh, in room smoking, something he swears he didn't do. They said it stunk up the room and they couldn't use it for two days. That's ridiculous. I didn't even smoke in the room, he said. I told them, hey, let us know not to leave it behind and we won't leave it behind. Some of us appreciate what's happening in Colorado. We're not going there to break the law or cause any trouble for anyone else. They offered to meet me halfway, and I refused because I didn't think that it was fair. I went to Twitter, and I got into contact with Hyatt's concierge account. They got details from me and then made a call to the hotel in Denver and made it good. When I heard that, it calmed me down. So there are a lot of laws that you need to uh, consider when you're going to go celebrate in Colorado this weekend. And uh, whether you're in Colorado or Washington or anywhere uh, celebrating this 420 this year, I think it's best that if you're a newcomer, uh, especially if you're in Colorado trying some of the edibles, be very, very careful. Edibles are not the same as smoking weed. Uh, if you see a particular cookie or brownie and you haven't had edibles before, maybe you should try half of it. And a couple of hours later, if you uh, aren't high, don't eat the other half. Just wait and see how it comes on. You can get a little bit of an uncomfortable situation uh, in the effect of eating too much of an edible. So be careful with that. Celebrate 420. It's all about the plant. Peace and love, everybody. Peace and love. We'll be back next week right here on CanawanaBuy.com. CanawanaBuy has great products they're adding every day and don't forget listen to my show medical marijuana radio friday nights at 9 p.m pacific and saturdays at 6 p.m pacific i'm larijuana peace and love peace and love